this video, we're going to cover ketone bodies. So by the end of this video, you'll understand how we form ketone bodies in the liver from acetyl-CoA, why we form ketone bodies, and how the overproduction of ketone bodies can lead to ketoacidosis. So let's get started. So how and why are ketone bodies formed? Under normal and healthy conditions, we actually produce small quantities of ketone bodies. However, when glucose is not available, we require an alternate energy source, and ketone bodies become our main source of fuel. The formation of ketone bodies occur during periods of starvation or fasting, so when glucose is unavailable, carbohydrate restrictive diets, long periods of exercise, alcoholism, and or untreated diabetes. Now, when we break down fatty acids through Beta oxidation, we produce acetyl CoA. The acetyl CoA can either enter the citric acid cycle, where it's oxidized to carbon dioxide and water to yield energy, and the citric acid cycle intermediates can be diverted to gluconeogenesis, producing glucose from non carbohydrate sources, or acetyl CoA can be converted to ketone bodies in the liver acetone, acetoacetate, or beta hydroxybutyrate. What happens is acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate are transported to extrahepatic tissues, so skeletal muscle, heart muscle, and renal cortex, where they are converted to acetyl CoA. And so acetyl CoA can then enter the citric acid cycle to generate energy. And for the brain, its main source of energy is glucose. So when glucose is not available, it uses acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate to yield energy. That's because fatty acids can't cross the blood-brain barrier. So when glucose is not available, the acetyl-CoA derived from fatty acid oxidation is going to be turned into ketone bodies to provide energy for the brain, skeletal muscle, and heart muscle. And for the other ketone body, can't forget acetone, it's not produced as much as the other types and it's actually exhaled. So if you have high ketone levels, this can cause your breath to actually smell like nail polish remover. High levels of acetone in the blood is toxic, and so the acetone breath can signal untreated diabetes or high levels of ketones. So those are the three types of ketone bodies, acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetone. So when glucose is not available, we need an alternate energy source. So ketone bodies become our main source of fuel because fatty acids can't cross the blood-brain barrier, so we need to produce energy. And so the acetyl-CoA derived from fatty acid oxidation is going to be turned into ketone bodies. So now let's subtract complexity and go through how we form ketone bodies in the liver from acetyl-CoA. Okay. The first step is combining two molecules of acetyl-CoA to produce acetyl-acetyl-CoA. And this is catalyzed by thiolase, and we're going to be removing a CoA here. Then, acetyl acetyl CoA joins with another acetyl CoA molecule, so here we have it here, producing beta hydroxy beta methyl glutaryl CoA, or HMG CoA for short. And this is done by HMG CoA synthase. From here, HMG CoA lyase is going to convert HMG CoA to acetyl acetate. So we're going to be removing an acetyl-CoA in this reaction. Acetyl acetate can then be converted to beta-hydroxybutyrate in a reversible reaction, where beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase reduces acetyl acetate. So remember that when you hear a dehydrogenase enzyme, it should signal to you that NAD plus is involved. So in this reaction, NADH is converted to NAD plus. Now, acetyl acetate can also be converted to acetone by acetoacetate decarboxylase. So we're going to be removing a carbon dioxide. So we've produced beta-hydroxybutyrate, and this is going to be transported to other tissues by blood, where it's going to be oxidized to acetyl-CoA and yield energy. And so let's go through this. Let's break this down. This is done in three steps. So it's first oxidized to acetoacetate, because this reaction is reversible. It's then converted to acetoacetyl-CoA 
by beta-keto-acyl-CoA transferase, and succinyl-CoA is going to come in here and transfer its coenzyme A, then thiolase is going to break the acetoacetyl-CoA into two molecules of acetyl-CoA. So then, now that we've produced acetyl-CoA, it can then enter the citric acid cycle to be oxidized and yield energy. Because remember that fatty acids can't cross the blood-brain barrier, so it needs to be converted to ketone bodies to produce the required energy in extrahepatic tissues. So the liver is going to generate ketone bodies. Now, although this is a really good alternate source of energy when glucose is unavailable, so when we're starving or we're fasting or long periods of exercise, excess production of ketone bodies can be harmful. Okay, it's harmful. Now, when the levels of acetoacetate and beta-hydroxybutyrate in the blood increases, this is going to decrease or lower the blood pH levels, resulting in acidosis. And if this is left untreated and we are in severe acidosis, it can cause death. Okay, so when you have high levels of ketone bodies, this is called ketosis. And when you're in a state of ketosis and acidosis, this condition is called ketoacidosis. And ketone bodies are overproduced in diabetes and also starvation, or when you're in a carbohydrate-restrictive diet. So for example, let's put this in context, in individuals who are on a ketogenic diet, so they're consuming more fats and using this as their major source of fuel. They will need to monitor their ketone levels to prevent ketoacidosis, so to prevent high levels of ketones in their blood because it can be very harmful and toxic. And during starvation, your body is going to divert acetyl-CoA to ketone body formation. Now, on the other hand, in individuals with untreated diabetes, the body has insufficient amount of insulin which means tissues can't take up glucose for oxidation or fatty acid synthesis. So let's break down what happens. Okay, so melanol-CoA, which is the starting material for fatty acid synthesis, is going to decrease significantly. And this is going to lead to activating carnitine acyltransferase 1, the shuttle that transports fatty acid into the mitochondria, because remember, Malonyl-CoA inhibits carnitine acyltransferase 1 in fatty acid synthesis, and we cover this in the regulation of fatty acid metabolism lecture. So once the fatty acids enters the mitochondria, they are going to be oxidized to acetyl-CoA. But the acetyl-CoA can't actually enter the citric acid cycle because the intermediates of the citric acid cycles are being diverted to gluconeogenesis, so making glucose from non-carbohydrate sources when our blood glucose levels are low or glucose from the diet is unavailable. Because even though the individual is consuming glucose, the body thinks it needs more glucose. So overproduction of acetyl-CoA is going to push the body to convert acetyl-CoA to ketone bodies leading to ketoacidosis. So that is ketone bodies. In this lecture, we learned that when glucose is not available, we require an alternate energy source because fatty acids can't cross the blood-brain barrier. So we use ketone bodies to yield energy. We talked about how excess production of ketone bodies is harmful and how this can lead to a condition called ketoacidosis. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow it down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire metabolism playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating.